Good morning. Uh, my name is Mark Anderson. I am the CEO of Strategic News Service, and this is another segment of Fire TV. And this morning, I want to talk to you about America's energy crisis, our fuel prices, and what we can do about this kind of broken state of affairs. I know in my small town, gas now costs over four dollars a gallon. Diesel is over five dollars. A lot of Americans, and I think a lot of people around the world, are confused about what's causing these high prices. I happen to be on the side of George Soros. I think that a lot of the cost, a lot of the price, is actually caused by speculation. Maybe 25% to 50% of the price. But that's a temporary problem. And I think we have to look at the bigger problems and the bigger solutions to get through this. A lot of the ideas I'm going to talk about this morning come from our Future Review Conference, which we just finished in May. So these aren't necessarily ideas of my own, but I've tried to integrate them into a plan. And, and since our country seems to have no plan, uh, a plan would be good. And within that plan, there's this idea that came out of fire also, which we now call the fire mantra. And I think it's an attitude, uh, a change in attitude, that we need to bring to ourselves and to how we solve problems. And the mantra is very simple. It goes like this. It isn't about problems. It's about solutions. It isn't about tomorrow, it's about now. And it isn't about them, it's about us. So if we bring that point of view, that kind of problem solving integration point of view to this question of what do we do about the energy crisis, it turns out there are a lot of good answers to very simple problems. So of course the first answer is leadership. I don't think we have any right now in this area and we need to have leadership. So step one, good leaders. And we'll have to leave it up to the American people to, uh, to decide this election, but finding somebody who has a clue about what to do about energy would be a great contribution to our country's future. So step two is, there are really three parts of all this in, in terms of solu solutions, and, and they break into very simple pieces. The first piece is how you consume energy, the second is how you distribute it, and the third is how you produce it. And too often people only look at one of the pieces when you really have to have all pieces working together for a solution. We're lucky because in this country we have Silicon Valley and we have people like Elon Musk and Vinod Koshla who are actively working as investors and entrepreneurs to solve the problem. And really that's part of this mantra, isn't it? Because it's not about somebody else, it's about us. These people have taken it on themselves to solve the problems that we're going to talk about today and they're doing a great job. And so I'd like to also underline the idea of being an optimist. A lot of people say things like technology isn't really the answer. Well, fair enough. It requires money, and it requires will, and it requires leadership. But guess what? Technology will solve the problems if we give people a chance. And so I'll give you the first example, Elon Musk. Uh, Tesla Motors, here's a guy who came out of nowhere, a uh, great entrepreneur. He started a company by himself to make uh, electric cars. He's now producing the first uh, electric cars that are, that are roadsters. Uh, they have fantastic... Uh, specs and he's about to start his second production number which is codenamed White Star. It'll be a sedan for the rest of us. Five people in a car. The car goes 200 miles on a charge. It's great. And this is the kind of thing that pushes big companies like General Motors forward. So they're, they're going to do the Volt. If you ask Bob Lutz at General Motors, the Volt is his biggest project in life. Uh, thank you, Bob. We're, we're looking forward to it. It'll turn out that if, if he's right, most people will use electric instead of, of petroleum energy in their driving, and th that'll be thanks to General Motors. And we have Honda following up with, with their new hydrogen cars. There are a lot of ways of solving a problem. And so I'd like to also underline this. There's nothing perfect about all this stuff. You don't have to have a perfect solution to get out of this mire. You just have to have a solution. There may be a million solutions. All you need is one good one or two good ones out of the million, and then you're out. So, um, first of all, if we say the consumption problem is essentially solvable. What, the, what I mean by that is, if we have basic pieces, we have transport, well, we, we can make our vehicles electric vehicles. This isn't very hard. If we look at, at lighting, which is a huge consumption of energy in the house, well, we have LEDs now. It isn't very hard if our only problem is to turn from incandescent lighting to LED lighting. We can do that. So, so there are simple solutions which have a technology base and which require some money and some will in each of these situations. So I'd suggest that the consumption part, oh, and let's not forget conservation. Germany uses probably half the energy or less that the United States uses to achieve the same goals. We should be ashamed of that and just fix it. So don't waste energy. So if the first part is, is how you consume it, that's pretty straightforward. We're already on the track where we can make things that consume less energy and look forward to a time when, when 
most of the energy we consume is probably provided electrically. And then the question is, can we distribute? Well, guess what? We already have a grid. So the grid needs investment. We need to look at it more closely and update it, bring it up to modern times. But the fact is, there is a grid right now. And you have a plug in your house right now, and you can use that. I'll mention something that a lot of folks don't know, which is the amount of power in the existing American electrical grid, according to Battelle research, is already enough so that if all you did was take all the electric, all the cars and light trucks in the United States and made them electric overnight, 94% of the energy needed to power those vehicles is already available in the existing grid because it doesn't get used fully at night. That's an astonishing thought. So these things are really doable, they're really achievable. If we've got one situation with transport solved, we've got the lighting solved, and so forth. So, so I'm trying to make the point that these are solvable problems. And if the distribution is also solvable, we've already got a distribution grid, then what does that leave us? Well, it leaves us with production. How do we produce energy? And I want to suggest something which I think will be a little bit surprising to you. I think energy ought to be free. We're so used to very expensive energy. We're spending a trillion dollars in the United States to fight wars over oil. What a waste of money. When God gives us, or whoever you think is in charge, gives us free photons every day. We get more energy than we could possibly use falling on the earth on a daily basis. So let's pay attention and do the right thing. We made a mistake. We took the wrong path and we picked oil for very, very spurious reasons. But the fact is we did it. We, we went on the wrong path. Maybe it was the right path then. It's the wrong path now. With that trillion dollars brought back home, we could afford a lot of mistakes at home and still be on the right path including investing in infrastructure and things that we don't, don't normally take care of. So I think there's a simple way out of this crisis, and here's what it is. And a lot of this actually will sound like what the Germans have already done. We need to buy about 20 years during which time we can transition from an oil economy to something else. But we can't afford to spend all that time consuming oil or producing waste in the air. So what do we do? We're going to use 20 years of nuclear energy. After 20 years, we shutter those plants. It's very simple. That's about the lifetime of a nuclear plant. So we fast-track construction of nuclear plants. Wherever there's a coal plant, it's replaced by a nuclear plant. As part of this political agreement, we also agree to go back and take all the waste that's sitting out in the rain in barrels right now, draining into the Columbia River and elsewhere. And that goes into the Nevada site. So we take good care of our prior nuclear waste while we're creating new plants. All the new nuclear waste, of course, goes into the same Nevada site. It's been built, we've spent billions on it, let's use it. After the 20 years, we've at that point achieved what we wanted to achieve, which is we've moved everybody over from consuming electricity from nuclear power into wind and solar and other alternative energies. And it's really that simple. At that point, we shutter all nuclear plants, and America is nuclear free, oil free, and free. My name is Mark Anderson. I'm CEO of SNS, and this is Fire TV. Thank you.